Morning, welcome back. So, live streaming, eh? The fun activity that lets any average Joe broadcast themselves online. Like a new season of Big Brother that no one asked for. Since anyone can pick up a camera and set up an internet connection nowadays, the sky's the limit within this entertainment medium. Gaming, art, chatting with your audience, streaming days where you walk around outside and do outside things. Not to worry though if you like to stay inside, you can still do outdoor things within the comfort of your own home. I never thought I'd see someone set off a gallon of fireworks inside a fake house that looks exactly like their real house. This is probably what the inside of my brain looks like when I have a hundred things I need to do in one hour. You even have popular celebrities hosting their own live streams all by themselves. I need the max win. Okay, here's a blast from the past for anyone in the old geriatric millennial club. We should get jackets. Twitch wasn't even the original name for the most popular streaming platform of today. It used to have a regular human name just like the rest of us. Justin. Like a dog named Daniel, or a cat named Lauren, who would definitely eat me if I died. The original Justin TV was a single channel featuring a guy named Justin, who wore a webcam attached to a baseball cap and streamed online via a laptop backpack system. You know, when live streaming was basically a single-celled organism with the most basic of functions. Mr. TV then made $970 million by selling his live video platform Twitch to Amazon, which has now become a household name for millennials and Gen Z. He must have made a really great first impression with his $5 a camera, and a dream. Just like in real life, where looks and scent play a big part when meeting new people. You know that popular saying that everyone totally says? The fragrance you're wearing will greet someone before you can even say hi. Plus, our sense of smell and memory are like this. I like wearing new scents whenever I go somewhere new, cause smelling it again makes my brain instantly start hallucinating about the fun memories I made during my trip. Using fragrance is a great way to show off the personality you want to present to the world. We all have at least two to three different personas for family and different social groups. These are the fragrance I got to try from Scentbird. When I'm feeling like a chill day outside hanging out with friends, I'll wear Gucci's Guilty, which has a fresh light scent because of the lemon and lavender. Usually my go-tos for ingredients I like to wear daily. And switching it up with Burberry for men in the evenings, this one has a stronger projection, but it's still low-key with peach, lime, and sandalwood notes. This one by Yellowstone reminds me of family events at night when a freshly showered dad would walk in with cologne he just spritzed on. Someone in a different age bracket or family situation would like this. This one by Curatrix isn't something I would gravitate towards because I'm not usually into sweet and spicy scents. This one's called Antihero. I gave it a try and it made me realize that I would rather smell this on someone else. When finding your signature scent, chances are the first one you try isn't going to be a certified hit. More often than not, it's a continuous process of trial and error. You know, when you realize, oh, this smell I liked in the beginning is actually giving me a headache. That's why Scentbird makes this part really easy. You get to try out new fragrances in a cost-effective way. Add $8 for your first fragrance and $16.95 for the month after that. Way better than going all in on a full or travel size, which is usually more expensive. Scentbird is a great option for beginners. Going to an actual store with salespeople and an overwhelming amount of options can be intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. It's so convenient because it all gets shipped right to your door. These magnetic cases protect the generously sized vials filled with your fragrance of the month that you can quickly toss in your purse or bag when you're out and about. They also personalize selections based on your tastes. Just tell them what you're into. If you're ready to change up your scent wardrobe, scan the QR code or use my code advasion 55 off or the link below to get 55% off Scentbird and get your product for half the price at just $8. Okay, so I am never wearing these glasses again on camera because they gave me the worst case of anime protagonist glare. <laughs> So, we've definitely come a long way from a single janky camera, a single janky chat box, and Wi-Fi connections only running on prayers. But you know how there's always a civilization way more advanced than the one you're currently living in? Let's all get on a Boeing plane to China and hope that it doesn't start separating mid-air like a transformer. <laughs> I am just kidding. Please don't hurt me. TikTok has cemented its position in the top five social medias in the world, which is pretty impressive considering it's less than a decade old. It better watch out for doctors with handlebar mustaches and sunglasses who minored in minors. I'd also like to give TikTok another award for the top app for wasting people's time. You know you've made it when you've made enemies with a bunch of US senators. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean, no. But before the birth of this short form content juggernaut, Douyin first debuted in September 2016 in China, a year before ByteDance introduced TikTok to overseas markets. And let me tell you something about Douyin. It's like looking at 
What we could have had if we used 100% of our brain, instead of wasting valuable resources trying to ban a dancing app every year. So if Doyen is the original brand name version of the app, TikTok is the western ass great value version with no time restrictions and giant heaping servings of serotonin brain rot. No wonder it's considered a place for young people. Their main demographic is 10 to 19 year olds. I remember seeing my friend's little niece scrolling through TikTok. Her algorithm? was whack. It was showing Lovecraftian cocoa melon content. It was actually quite unsettling. I had Charlie the Unicorn. They have whatever this is. La leyenda de la Puchaina, que desapareció en el bosque de Aneca Caneculo. The endless screen time that's available 24-7 is probably hindering our development. Like we're going from being normal to chronically online at the age of 5. Douyin, which is based in China, caters to a Chinese audience. Who would have thought? One of the biggest differences is that Douyin has limits on how long young people can be on the app and what type of content they can see. The version that's served to Chinese consumers called Douyin is very different from the one available in the West. In their version of TikTok, if you're under 14 years old, they show you science experiments you can do at home, museum exhibits, patriotism videos, and educational videos. And they also limit it to only 40 minutes per day. Now, they don't ship that version of TikTok to the rest of the world. Would have been nice if TikTok had that. A six-year-old dabbed me up recently, and I shook their hand. Ugh. The version served to the West has kids hooked for hours at a time. The impact, Harris says, is predictable. There's a survey of preteens in the U.S. and China asking what is the most aspirational career that you want to have. And the U.S., the number one was influencer. Social media influencer. And in China, the number one was astronaut. There's definitely a trend of influencer finally being recognized as a legitimate career by the general public. And not to say that China doesn't have its own version of brain rot for adults. It is very interesting to see the differences between kids and how they develop based on the content they're watching. The content for these Douyin kids is already so advanced. And then there's the live streaming portion for anyone older than Hisoka's ideal type. Ew. Basically anyone that's not a kid. Let me tell you, when I first dipped my toes into this new platform, it felt like I was on another planet with the same interface, but everything was slightly different in a better way. I didn't fully understand the complex nuances of I'm so 3008, you so 2000 and late by Fergie until now. They have extra features on the homepage that just make sense. Douyin features rankings of top accounts by categories, including celebrities, foreign and Chinese companies, and so on, which is a big help for brands looking to work with creators and specific niches. If you're a hot pot company that wants to sponsor someone that eats hot pot, just head on over to the eating genre. The most popular types of content you'll see on Douyin is educational content, with videos helping to improve skills for personal growth, and lifestyle-based tips. I find that there's more niches on Douyin that are easily searchable instead of scrolling until you find something you like. I think I remember seeing a genre of content that was just called shouting. I'm sure you've noticed the migration of trends that get popular on Douyin first, then make its way over to TikTok months or years later. Douyin makeup, cool transitions, even viral videos that are completely in Mandarin. I now know how Facebook bums feel when outdated memes show up on their timeline and they think it's new. You know what, Barbara Ann, 55 female from my old retail job? I will read that rage comic you sent me last week. Hmm, damn. That was unironically kind of funny. But the most fascinating thing about Douyin is the e-commerce live streaming scene. Compared to TikTok, it's in a completely different realm. We're on baby mode over here, while they're actually living in 3008 with Fergie. It's like realizing the final boss has five other forums after spending a week beating the first one. They even have a different name for celebrity influencers. K-O-L, a key opinion leader, who have strong influencing power on the buying behavior of their social media followers and others. A tastemaker, if if you will, they shape opinions, start trends, and have a connection with their followers that's more like a friendship than a fandom. Think of them as your brand's new best friends. Kinda sounds like a very one-sided parasocial relationship with a famous person. Now key opinion leader, well that just sounds badass. Compared to influencer, 
Ew. It's like one of those unnecessarily complicated job titles that make you seem way more important than you are. Like Matt Pillar from Corporate. Marketing profit of Overlord Nourishment Coordinator. Someone keep an eye on him. For Asian audiences, the opinions of KOLs and celebrities tend to hold more weight compared to influencers on TikTok. Especially if you have a great reputation and a really strong brand image. There's a history of Asian celebrities selling out items by casually mentioning them. Like when Jungkook from BTS mentioned to a fan on a a fan cafe that he liked using downy fabric softener. Next thing you know, there's a temporary shortage of ultra downy infusions amber blossom. Bouquet ombre. Or when Jackson Wang had a Fendi collaboration that sold out in minutes after being released. And these were not cheap items like laundry detergent. Douyin has a way better reputation as a social media app for shopping. Compared to TikTok and Instagram, who have both faced a lot of pushback from users when trying to introduce dedicated shopping tabs, which as of now, Instagram has completely removed. I kinda get it though, the vibes are definitely gonna be off when you have to answer this question. Hey, we're checking your washer and dryer. It's really nice. Oh, that little thing? I ordered from TikTok a few months ago. What? TikTok? Like the app where people post dancing videos? I know, crazy, right? Anyways, I ordered sticks for tonight from Instagram. The combination of short form content, advanced live streaming tools, and a reputable platform that lets you buy things in app with just three taps. Becoming a popular e-commerce business by live streaming is normalized in China. There are even entire floors dedicated to having multiple streams running at the same time by different employees. That person that looks like they're just chilling in their room on a Friday night might actually be in a factory with an entire team behind them. <laughs> At this point, the market's already saturated. People have to come up with some interesting tactics to stand up from the crowd. You ever get really hungry while scrolling when someone appears on your timeline and starts eating? I get that all the time. Hi when it's 3 so a.m. In, in Korea and I wake and up, I woke up severely, severely dehydrated. If you come across a live stream of someone cooking up a storm, there's a chance you can order the food on the screen and get it delivered right to your door. Douyin now has its own e-commerce system, so you can directly buy things in it without jumping to other page. We are now in terminal your live stream. Oh, it's look very tasty. I want to buy, so I can directly order. You can also directly check your delivery information in Douyin. Oh, that's not... That's actually quite ingenious. When I Uber Eats, I have no idea what my food is going through before it gets to me. Even the people eating in the restaurant don't get to see the food getting prepared this close up. There's also a popular genre of content where people showcase their lives in rural farming areas, where you can tune in and watch them going through their tasks in real time. Someone had a live stream of themselves harvesting bamboo, and I was mesmerized the whole time. <laughs> Pandas might be onto something. That giant bamboo stalk looks delicious. Maybe I'll order one later to chew on. They even got their own versions of mmm, -hmm, ice cream so good, but in song form. I actually don't know what's happening here but the vibes are good. This is a popular live stream that made its way over to TikTok, where an overbearing boss would watch her employees test product in real time. And by watch, I literally mean watch them five inches away from their face, like they're a JoJo stand. This is how middle-aged assistant managers named Linda be micromanaging you at Old Navy. 
I also just noticed the male employee in the back. Either he needs to watch some more training videos, or quality testing USB silicone lamps is not the career path for him. I remember making this face when my parents caught me doing something bad. Turns out this is a live stream to promote this silicone USB lamp, under the guise of a day in the life of a factory worker stream. The overall concept is very creative and actually pretty funny when you think about how absurd it is. Nothing like being a slave to our corporate overlords. How relatable. But wait, this thing kind of looks useful. And you do get a lot of engagement during these live streams, which leads to more views and people checking out the product as a result. So why do you see so many weird ideas for live streams on Douyin? It has to do with Chinese audiences not wanting to be served content that is clearly an ad. Instead of watching an influencer shove a product in your face, selling it to you in heavy influencer accent, Douyin live streams have dynamic plots, art direction, and even set design. I'd rather watch someone creatively sell me an umbrella, using no words, than from an influencer who lives in LA where it only rains five times a year. It's currently summer and I already have one, but I need 10 of those specific umbrellas in my house right now. The absolute worst mistake on Douyin would be to post anything resembling a traditional advertisement. Don't attempt to give your influencers a script. Influencer marketing at its heart is like storytelling. You need to give your influencers enough flexibility to tell your story to their fans in a way that keeps them authentic. The influencers' followers will instantly know if the videos promoting your products are made in a different style to the influencers' usual videos. That's why dedicated brand content tends to underperform. It's something I've noticed as a viewer and as a content creator who's done it myself. Doyen gives you more flexibility where you can actually mention more than one product at a time. For example, this girl's vlog, she simply just log a day in her life and she spent more time to describe this product and this product in her video. Like maybe 10 to 20 more seconds than other products she's using. And you know what? It's very natural. You don't feel like they are trying to sell it to you so hard. You feel like this just in bed with the video. You pay more attention to those products more than other products. It bring huge sales on Douyin. It does bring into question if ads are being properly disclosed here, but there is a difference from influencers getting paid to promote something and not disclosing it, compared to a company hiring their own employees to make content to sell their products. I, I think. There was a really funny instance during a live stream where a girl was trying to sell lashes by putting them on, but the audience was feeling kind of silly and goofy, so they sent her gifts that would cover her eyes, which made for some really funny reactions. <laughs> These creative types of live streams really give the audience a sense of involvement while watching. Yeah, these people are trying to sell you things, but at least it's entertaining. You know those TikTok lives of people doing scoop content where you pay for a mystery bag of scoops from an assortment of random items like candy, makeup, toys, stickers, etc. Well, what about having so much product that you're able to sit in it and do your scooping from there? Okay, the lower half of her body better be covered in full PPE or saran wrapped, or she's at least wearing those see-through JYP plastic pants. I don't want someone's legs touching my food. Oh, and if you're gonna sell me a teapot, you better make sure it's waterproof on the outside. <laughs> At this point, Douyin live streams are already moving on to the next stage of evolution. AI influencers are being created to host these e-commerce live streams that can last for days. You know, since they don't need to eat and rest like humans do. Isn't that concerning? Goddamn AI aliens crossing our borders, taking all our jobs. This country's gonna sh** it ever since scandal stopped Aaron. Y'all need to go back to where you came from. Build the firewall 2026. I guess what I'm trying to say is... 
I can't tell if we're evolving or regressing as a society. Do I want a fake futuristic anime mom selling me bidets pretending to be human? Or do I want someone with dead eyes and influencer accent selling me mascara the old fashioned way? Eh, only time will tell I guess. At least we have options. Just like how you can make the choice to feed the algorithm by liking this video. Let's me know you enjoyed the content. Let's keep this thing happy and appeased for now. You never know what these machines are thinking. Once the algorithm becomes sentient and starts live streaming on its own, it's kind of over for the rest of us human creators. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and see you in the next one. And thanks again to Scentbird. Use Advasion 55 off to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird.